All right there, everyone. Are we looking at the end of the EU? Experts are beginning to openly say that the days of the EU may in fact be coming to an end. That's what we'll be talking about on today's video. Before we do, a huge welcome to all of our new viewers. If this is your first time visiting our channel, I post two videos a day analyzing current events in light of conservative trends. So let me encourage you to smack that bell and subscribe button. We are on our way to 100,000 subscribers, and we'd love to have you as a part of our online community where we celebrate all things nationalist, populist, and traditionalist. All right. European affairs experts, such as Ian Kearns, are now openly saying that the days of the EU may indeed be numbered. What Kearns and others are basically saying is that with Italy fully in the nationalist populist fold uh, in terms of their new government, uh, with the rise of the nationalist rights popularity throughout the whole of Western, Central, and Eastern Europe, all it would actually take is another financial crisis, particularly one that takes a direct hit at the euro, the European Union's common currency, for the entire bloc to shatter and fall apart. In other words, the EU is currently in its most weak and vulnerable position since its inception, which is in turn rendering it a sitting duck for any crisis to come along and blow it apart. The EU is that vulnerable. Specifically, Kern sees the weakness and vulnerability of the EU emerge most explicitly in light of the single currency, the euro, and that all you would need at this point is a financial crisis that lots of people are speculating might be on the horizon. He seems to be alluding to the International Monetary Fund's warning, the IMF, that uh, what they're calling for is a large challenges ahead to Europe that will require significant measures to prevent a second Great Depression. Now, whether or not we're uh, talking something as massive as that, or whether we're just talking about a correction in the market, of course, that takes place a, a correction every three years or so in the market. But if we're talking a real hit, something involves a, a serious recession, just that alone would be enough to most likely destroy the single currency. That's how vulnerable the EU is right now, because the moment you chuck the single currency... Well, everybody knows that you've basically undermined the entire economic rationale for the EU, which is the political and economic structure for the single currency of the euro. Now, as an example, just how vulnerable the EU is right now, he cited the ongoing feud between Rome and Brussels. I'm sure many of you know the EU rejected Italy's proposed budget for the next fiscal year. And that was the first time Brussels ever vetoed a member nation's proposed budget. Now, if the budget crisis remains unresolved, the Italian economy may fall into recession early next year and bring with it the whole of the EU member nations. Now, Kern's assessment is not unique. There have been at least two official forecasts that do in fact see a very real possibility that the EU will break up in the near future. The first forecast comes from the U.S. National Intelligence Council. It proposes three possible scenarios for the future of the EU. Landed Savin over at uh, Geopolitica has done some really helpful uh, writing on this. The first forecast is what we might call the collapse scenario. And this, of course, is where the EU basically falls apart. Now, what's so fascinating here is that the Intelligence Council sees this coming not so much directly from Brexit-like elections, but more in terms of what Kern sees, that is, through the reassertion of national currencies such as what, by the way, the nationalists right in Italy and France have been advocating. And what would happen here is that we would see a massive withdrawal of euro deposits from domestic financial institutions, which would, of course, in effect, tank the euro. And so the EU, which is the whole rationale for the euro, would be a collateral victim, particularly as border controls are reasserted among nationalist uh, European sentiments. Now, in order for this scenario to play out, you would need a mass multinational rejection of the euro within a common time frame. And that's precisely what Kearns is arguing. He's arguing that the EU is vulnerable right now so that all it would take is one financial crisis for the union to fall apart. And it's precisely the kind of scenario needed for a mass multinational rejection of the euro within a common time frame. So that's the first forecasted scenario, the so-called collapse scenario. Then you have, secondly, what the intelligence agency calls the slow decline scenario. And this is where the nationalist populist movements are successful, but in limited locations. 
and the EU continues to perpetuate, but the institution doesn't make the necessary reforms for it to be sustainable. And so the remaining member nations deal with bailouts, they deal with stagnant wages and low economic growth, and eventually public discontent renationalizes their politics, and the EU eventually just phases out. There is a third scenario, which we might call the Renaissance scenario, where the EU bounces back. So from this vantage point, the EU goes through a period of crisis, but then makes all the necessary reforms. And as a response, economic activity picks up, material conditions become better for most Europeans, and they stick with it, and the EU, in effect, gets a reprieve for the foreseeable future. I do see this as plausible only if the nationalist right takes over in the upcoming European parliamentary elections in May. If Matteo Salvini and Viktor Orban end up running the EU, then I could see this renaissance scenario playing, playing out. But apart from that, Brussels is simply way too arrogant, way too intense on expanding the European project into a single super state that negates the sovereignty of its member nation, so we could forget about that option. So, these are the three possible future scenarios that the National Intelligence Council foresees for the European Union. Now, Savin goes on to sign another forecast model, and this comes from a senior economist for Europe at the conference board and uh, who was formerly part of the Brussels-based think tank, the Center for European Policy Studies. And she has forecasted four possible scenarios for the EU. I'll be very quick on them. The first is what she calls the continued stagnation scenario, as as it sounds, it just involves an unreformable bureaucracy, wage stagnation, minimal economic growth, the private sector is hesitant to invest, blah, blah, blah. And this is going to go on in perpetuity and the new normal, so to speak, which doesn't bode well for the future of the EU. The second scenario is what she calls a reset which is akin to the Renaissance scenario. So with a reset, the EU is implementing the necessary reforms while removing trade barriers between nations, which in turn garners uh, the confidence of investors, which in turn boosts economic growth and increases standards of living for most Europeans. Uh, and the global growth helps finance the welfare state and subsidies for nations that are not doing as well as the wider regions. Again, not very likely given the current regime in Brussels. Then there's what she calls a tightrope scenario. And this is where there's the necessary institutional reform, but without the reciprocal global growth. And this leads to high uncertainty. So the nationalist populist blowback is successful in evoking necessary reforms. But there's a tightrope that has to be walked between the success of the reforms and the disappointing economic returns and deficient material conditions. And here, government spending has to make up for private sector shortfalls. And then finally, she forecasts what she calls a lip service scenario. And I like, I think this is very interesting. Publicly, the nations are claiming a commitment to the EU. Well, privately, their, you know, their economic growth is coming primarily from outside the EU and exports, right? Reforms will be minimal since lip service involves verbal promises, but really no action. And some countries, particularly the exporting ones, are doing well while others economically are stagnant, and the continent eventually fractures that way. Now, I think Savin is correct that we can scratch the Renaissance and the reset scenarios off the list. The nationalist populist genie is out of the Brexit blowback uh, uh, bottle, and uh, we're not going to be able to put it back. Moreover, the bureaucracy of the EU really is in many respects beyond the kind of reforms needed for such a revitalization. With the death of the Trans-Pacific Partnership, I really don't think we're going to be seeing a renaissance or reset scenario really in any way. And I don't think we're going to see uh, the notion of a continued stagnation going on either. Uh, societies tend to stick with political arrangements as long as they're satisfied with the material conditions arising from those arrangements. And when those material conditions become unsatisfactory, the population tends to refrain from supporting the various institutions, regulations, and authorities that comprise the current political order. So I don't see a new normal and continued stagnation. The member nations will look for alternative political paradigms that foster alternative economic alliances to improve material conditions. And so what that leaves us with is what the U.S. intelligence agency calls a collapse scenario, uh, 
since this would involve a mass exodus of countries from the EU all taking place in tandem. The tightrope scenario where the EU makes some reforms, but it's not enough to garner reciprocal economic investment from the European or global private sector. Uh, and the uh, lip service scenario, uh, which is based on a slow decline. The important point here is that none of these scenarios results in a sustained EU project. <laughs> it does appear that the dire forecasts are correct, and we may in fact therefore be seeing nothing less than the end of the EU in the not-so-distant future. As always, please like, comment, and subscribe. Check out our new online merchandise selection where you can get gear and apparel celebrating all things nationalist and populist and a special Christmas time discount of 15% off all items by entering the promotion code that I provided for you below. And if you would, please click on our Patreon or PayPal links uh, below. Um, become a supporter of this channel. As you know, we are periodically demonetized by YouTube and we could really use your help so we can continue to analyze current events in light of conservative trends so that you can personally and professionally flourish. God bless.